So news has just broke out a few hours ago, maybe about 12, about a coin, a project called Plus Token. And it's causing a lot of waves in the crypto community. It's causing a lot of panic in the markets. And if you look at the price chart, we can see that there is a lot of a lot of that panic and it's affecting the price of Bitcoin to the to the extent that we have had some massive, massive dumping. We've had a lot of sell offs and it, it's all just coming out now. All of a sudden, all of this news about what this plus token project is and what is what's happening behind it, what's going on. So I looked over the, the information. I looked at the plus token website and I thought I would make a video where I would talk a little bit about what's going on with plus token. So that will be this video. So <clears throat> first of all, the question that people should have on their minds, uh, what is exactly plus token? So plus token is a project, if you can call it that as a project, very similar to BitConnect. Um, you go to their website and it's really crappy English and they tell you invest in plus token and you will receive benefits. So what are these benefits that plus token provides? So it's, uh, they, it's a project that promises monthly interest. So every month you will get anywhere from 6% to 18% monthly interest on the amount of money that you put in. So if you put in $1,000, you get 6%. Uh, I don't know what the, the gradation scale on that is. I would imagine that the more money you have in, the higher your interest is. And what's more interesting is not only do they, they promise 6 to 18% monthly interest, which is pretty insane even on a yearly scale, Imagine getting 8% ROI on something. It's, it's pretty much unheard of. It's usually about 10% for investments. Um, but 18% is pretty sick, and they're doing that every month. So but this is a pretty insane numbers. Uh, the other thing that they're promising to users, people who buy it, is a 100% referral bonus. So I don't think you've ever heard of this before, 100% bonus. So if you refer a friend into Plus Token and they start staking their plus token with their with their uh, proprietary wallet then you will receive a hundred percent of the money that they earn so if i refer a friend and he makes two hundred dollars i make two hundred dollars so that's another thing that makes that that uh, makes this thing as viral as it has been and the last interesting little tidbit that i found on the plus token website was that you need to have a fifty thousand dollar usd minimum requirement in order to actually receive these benefits. So you need to put in 50 grand, 50K upfront, day one, if you actually want to be able to receive the monthly dividends, the daily dividends, the referral bonus. It's quite a lot of money. So obviously what this happened, what this has caused to happen is it's brought in a lot of people who necessarily, who aren't necessarily crypto investors, specifically from China, and they've, they've bought in all of this plus token, which it really makes you wonder, I mean, if you have $50,000 in USD, chances are you probably have some level of financial intelligence. You should know what a Ponzi scheme looks like and what a pyramid scheme looks like. This is clearly both of those. So pyramid scheme because it's it's layered. And it, I mean, it, it's completely obvious if you look at it from that perspective. It's saying, well, if you refer friends, you get money. Uh, depending on your level, you get more money. Depending on how much money you put in, you get more money out. And, and it's just it's a, it's a complete pyramid scheme. It's obvious that it's a pyramid scheme. And so it really makes you wonder how they're tricking so many people who have $50,000 plus that they're just willing to throw away and they're willing to, to spend it on, on this plus token nonsense. So it, it's really, really quite strange. But the, the, the fact of the matter is that they have amassed, this plus token team has amassed over $2 billion, billion with a B, of Bitcoin in their wallets. And this project started in 2018, last year, mid-2018. So it's been about a year and a half, maybe. And they've gotten over 1% of Bitcoin supply. They have something like 200,000 200, Bitcoin, which is insane. Like, how the hell does this happen? And no one heard about it at all. And there's there's people who have their own theories. Davi Wan is obviously the, the big proponent of what's going on here. And she's really the one who's breaking the story. And in her opinion, her theory is that uh, this has more to do with the divide between Asia, China, Korea, and American Western crypto communities. And that's why no one from the West really has heard about this plus token thing until now. And I imagine it goes it goes the opposite way too. I bet the Chinese didn't really know or hear about BitConnect because these are really very similar. You can think of plus token as a, as a, as a much more insidious form of BitConnect. 
and uh, I mean, it's 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 obviously a scam. If you look at their website on Plus Token, their uh, their team page, they have just one guy and their owner, and it's just some random. I think it's a Chinese guy, and his name is Mr. Leo, which is just hilarious. I mean, that I I want to give Mr. Leo my fifty thousand dollars. Please help me lose my money, Mr. Leo. I mean, very dependable, right? But uh, yeah, so because of this, what what is happening is people are. The, the team has been already arrested by the police. And the team, is, so the team is arrested. But what we're seeing is apparently all of these wallets that held all of this Bitcoin was multi-sig wallets. And so the way a multi-sig wallet works is if you have 10 people in your multi-sig, well, you only need, let's say, six of them or seven of them or five of them, however many, in order to actually move the amount of Bitcoin in it. So even though most of the team behind this plus token scam has been, or some of the team has been... Uh, arrested we don't actually know how many people control these wallets if they still control these wallets and what we're seeing is there is movement in these wallets so there's hundreds of bitcoin being sent out to huobi to i believe i know for i know for sure they're sent out to huobi I'm, I'm i believe they also were being sent to binance and hundreds of bitcoin are being dumped on the market no care for the for the buy side and it's just causing these massive dumps. And so obviously because of this, because now there's there's these scammers who own 1% of the Bitcoin supply, a lot of other people, traders now, are starting to short this thing. So Bitcoin is, is going down, Ethereum's going down. That's the other interesting thing. They also own about 1% of the circulating Ethereum supply, which is insane if you think about it, that they own that much. And so it, it's really hard to, to wrap your head around as, a, as the Western audience is that, first of all, again, how did they scam this many rich people? How did they fool this many rich people into giving 50000 up front? And secondly, just, just the insanity of it, of no one even hearing about it until now, until it got so large and so huge that it's just a, a monolith, right? So it's, it's strange. And, and this video, really, I wanted to... The questions that are being asked right now is... So the market is obviously tanking. And most people think it's due to the plus token. But honestly, if you actually look at the chain analysis, so there's been some smart people who have been doing chain analysis on this plus token movement. And it turns out that plus token is whole. It turns out that they're holding most of the funds. So most of the money is not being spent. I mean, you can imagine what it would be like trying to move $3 billion worth of Bitcoin and, and just selling it on the market. It, it would go straight to zero. You, would, you wouldn't even sell... You probably wouldn't even sell 3% of that amount of money before you tank the entire order book to zero on every single exchange. So it's it's pretty much impossible to dump on the market uh, in, from, in that way. So what they're doing is they're sending it in batches of 100. Fortunately, most of the Bitcoin still hasn't moved. Most of the funds aren't spent. So that means that people, as time progresses, more people are watching these addresses, more people are starting to blacklist them, more people are, are being warned and, and news is spreading. And then we're getting, obviously, videos like this where more people are getting educated on this, which is great. So the more people know, the better. This The crypto community really is a community that has to uh, work on its own, almost in a sense. There really is no authority that says, hey, this has happened. Everyone be careful. It's just, in this case, it was Dovey, who was just a Twitter a Twitter individual, and she broke the news. Um, and the block didn't break it, so get Rex the block yet again. So the, the question really is, first, will Bitcoin and crypto suffer from this? And I think the answer is probably a little bit. I mean, we already have things like Bitcoin obituaries in, in the in the mainstream media all the time that says Bitcoin is used by thugs and criminals. And so this really is just going to add more fuel to that fire, which sucks. But unfortunately, that's just the fact of life. We're always going to have thugs and criminals. In Bitcoin's case, they're obviously easy to spot, unlike with fiat. So in this case, we have, we know for a fact that uh, these people have been scamming. But that's neither here nor there. So we're obviously going to get these kind of stories. Is crypto really going to suffer from this? I don't necessarily believe so, and that really just has a lot to do with the fact that I think most people are going to blacklist these addresses. Uh, most people are going to be well informed on what's going on with this whole plus token nonsense. And so because of that, uh, I, I really almost see this as kind of a token burn, um, which is which is interesting because if everyone blacklists these wallets, then this Bitcoin essentially can never get spent. And it's a really large amount of Bitcoin, which is, again, 1% of the circulating supply. So not, not a bad supply shock. 
Um, it does suck for the individuals in China and, and Korea who are investing in this thing, investing, if you can call it that, but there's really nothing we can do about that. Um, but then the second thing, the second question that people are asking is, will exchanges really allow this to happen? Because so far, they're not really doing too much about the blacklisting. So I talked about the blacklisting from a community perspective, but there is a level of blacklisting that needs to happen from the exchange perspective as well. So what the exchanges need to do is they need to figure out Okay, well, these are the wallets. We know these are the wallets. We've done chain analysis. We know that these are the ones that are trying to dump on the market. We can see them coming in. We can see the deposits coming into Binance. We know the accounts on Huobi as well. We know the accounts. We see the market selling and we see them trying to withdraw. So what they need to do and what they should do, in my opinion, is take the necessary steps to freeze these accounts, blacklist the addresses, make sure that they can't get that Bitcoin out because if they get that Bitcoin out, obviously they're going to continue selling. And honestly, we, we really don't need that. So the question is, will exchanges allow this to happen? Because while you might think that this is something that Binance, Huobi, etc. are obviously incentivized to do, they have yet to do it. So the Bitcoin is continuing to be moved and dumped on the market and no exchange so far has done anything about it. And so it's very strange. And I think... So my personal theories just has to do with information, just because this is so new that no one really heard about it. No one really knows too much about it. And that's probably why the exchanges haven't done uh, the necessary steps to block that, that, uh, that those incoming deposits and that selling action. So I do expect that every single exchange in the future, and I think this is going to happen in the next 24 to 48 hours, every single exchange in the future is going to blacklist these addresses. This Bitcoin is not going to be allowed to be sold. Obviously, we have the authorities who are on this case. As more people get in, uh, indicted and caught and arrested, it's going to be uh, even harder for these whoever these multi-sig holders are to keep moving these Bitcoin. Uh, eventually, it's going to be that most of the multi-sig owners are either in jail or they can't, uh, or they otherwise can't move the Bitcoin, which is great. So the final thing is the market has been dumping because of this. If you're an individual who, who who has strong hands and you realize that this is happening because of whatever this plus token nonsense is, then great. It's a great buying opportunity for you. In my opinion, I think it has a, it's, it's very much like that. We, we've had FUD before. And this essentially is a hell of a lot of FUD. People are panicking. But I don't think any of the panic is really justified because there's two possibilities. Either the exchanges block the, the Bitcoin coming in and Ethereum coming in and everyone wins because now we have 1% less Bitcoin and Ethereum in existence, which is awesome. Or the alternative is they let everyone dump on the market which doesn't make sense. Why would you let people dump on the market? You're gonna lower the, the, the amount of money in the crypto ecosystem because these people are not never gonna give it back. It lowers your standing in the crypto ecosystem. You're gonna make less money if there are less people coming in, if there's less money involved. So from that perspective, I really don't see the incentive. And then finally, as exchanges start doing this, so if Binance comes out and says, we are blacklisting this, we're making sure that the money can't, uh, can't get sold here, all of the other exchanges are watching too. So these other exchanges are going to start doing the same thing. So I think in the next 24 to 48 hours, I, I think all of the exchanges are probably almost certainly going to block all of the Bitcoin coming in. And for anyone who otherwise is, is trying to short this thing, like be careful, man, watch out. Uh, because I, I do think this is, in this case, it's a very big case of FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. A lot of panic, but really there's not much to panic about. Uh, in this case, we know who the perpetrators are. We basically put them all in jail already. We know where the wallets, where the wa who the wallets are, uh, where which ones they are. We know the amount of Bitcoin involved. We know how to deal with the problem. We've dealt with similar problems and hacks before. Things do get blacklisted. This is historically something that happens. The community always pushes back and always wins in the end. So you have to keep that that uh, that idea in mind that the community does know what to do. The exchanges do know what to do. They have everyone's best intent or everyone's best intentions at heart. So I, I'm not sure if I'll make a follow up video to this. Probably won't, but we'll see. Anyway, like the video. If you like to subscribe to the channel, if you want to see more, I will be back tomorrow with a Tezos video. So look out for that one and I will see you guys next time.